We got Brian Brian in Boston. How are you? Hi guys, how are you doing today? Good. Um, man, I wanted to address something. I've been watching you for the last past six months or so, and I'm not coming from a CS view or anything like that, but I've, I've been a, a philosopher for, the, I'd say, the last 15 years or so, and I've come to, and I really have this issue with um, when, you, when you refer to yourself as agnostic theist. Am I, am I, is that a fair uh, assumption that I'm accusing you of? For me? Yeah, do you, do you consider yourself an agnostic atheist? Uh, depending on the definition of knowledge, yes. Okay, so can we, can we can I address this because I find it to be inherently contradictory then because uh, I see, feel that they, the distinction you guys give is, is that well, you know that there's that there's no you can't prove that there's no God, however, a lack of a belief is therefore uh, the only conclusion, so it's you can have a non belief but then saying that non belief is both agnostic and atheist it's redundant am I well, why, why would it be redundant? If theism and atheism address belief, and Gnosticism and agnosticism address knowledge, and knowledge is a subset of belief, then how can they possibly be in conflict? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Socrates. Um, the Socratic thinking has submitted to the fact that belief, when if it comes, if it's not based on your knowledge, you should belief should be your ignorance. So as your ignorance is your belief. That's a... That would be your um, intellectually honest position. You can't, just because you, if you don't have the knowledge of something, well, and to be fair, let me clarify. What do you think atheism is first? Because I think I found the confusion. Okay, sure. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the 2009 Encyclop uh, Encyclop uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica in 2009. It, it says here that it's, uh, it's defined as uh, a rejection of deity or deities. Sure. And actually, I, I would say that it would be rejection of the proposition that a deity or a deity exists. Because rejection of deities could, could include somebody who believes a god exists but rejects them on some other, you know, rejects worshiping them, things like that. So it's, it's necessarily tied to belief. Okay, but what, why do you guys, my problem is you separate belief. You shouldn't it someone that has a pursuit of knowledge, a pursuit of love? I don't care about, I don't care about knowledge. I don't care about what people claim as knowledge because we don't wait until we have knowledge of something to act upon it. You act in accordance with your beliefs. Knowledge is a subset of beliefs, and while it's nifty that we claim to know things, um, it's more important what we actually believe or do not believe because that's all it takes to inform actions. Well, that's my, po my, my point. We act from ignorance today because we're in this form of pragmatism rather than principles. Uh, we, you, you, have, you, you have basically a position here where you're saying, you know that you're ignorant on the position, but you're going to act against it accordingly. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, it seems to be. I'm not, I'm not, wow, you, it, there's, there's this whole thing of, um, what I mean by agnostic atheism is something you can also find at ironchariots.org, which is that, Theism is, I believe a God exists. Atheism is, I do not believe. And then whether or not you identify yourself as a Gnostic or agnostic, theist or atheist, depends on, essentially, the strength of the belief. Do you count this belief as knowledge? And so saying, I do not believe that a God exists, and then putting the agnostic thing on there, yes, there's a potential conflict there, because the, the problem is that it would probably be... Um, there, there's a disjunction between I do not believe and I don't know. And the don't know is something that applies more accurately to the anti-theist position. And mm -hmm. so it would be a Gnostic anti-theist, I guess, would be, um, would be that. So I don't, I, you know, it's, it's I don't normally I don't want to put words in your mouth. What? So let me clarify. You got do you so do you actually that that you, you know you accept uh, the atheism to be the rejection though of deity or deities just to simplify it or the, you said yourself the, the normative of the, the normal definition that I use now is that atheism is the rejection of theistic claims. Okay, that's that's a completely fair definition. So what, now that my problem comes down to this cognitive dissonance, we have this. What's define what we mean by belief versus uh, what you sure. said, I don't know. Belief so is a belief the, is something that is based on in what I think a pathos appeal. Is no, it not? I, I belief, when I say belief, I mean belief is the acceptance of a proposition as true or likely true. Right. 
That's it. So if you're going, to, so that isn't that a cognitive dissonance if you do not know, but then you're going to choose to believe something that you don't know. No. It's, okay. Um, well, I, then you can correct me because I'm actually. Curious. I don't need to. I, I don't need to know something in order to believe it. And but then that's. But why don't you have to? Because, I, because if that's exa because that's exactly backwards. You need to believe something in order to claim that you know it. Knowledge is a subset of belief. So on, on this, on this, the example I used to use a courtroom example. Let me try something completely different. You ever seen one of those things where there's a uh, a jar on a counter and it's full of like gumballs, and they have a contest to see who can guess closest to the actual number of gumballs? Sure. Okay. So as long as there's gumballs in that jar, you and I would agree that the number of gumballs is either even or odd, correct? Uh, it's, uh, evidently, it would have to be, yes. Okay. So what's the default position on the number of gumballs? Uh, the number of gumballs uh, as a numerical number or as a, ra or as a rounded position? Uh, the, no the, quantity being, the quantity of gumballs being either even or odd, what's the default position? The default position is neutral. Yes. Um, but if somebody asserts the number of gumballs in this jar, I believe, is even. I'm the, if, I, if I'm in the default position, I disbelieve that assertion. I do not accept that assertion. I reject that assertion. That doesn't mean that I think that the number is, fault, is, is odd. Right. Because we only, we only address a single prong of a dilemma at a time. And I completely agree with this. Okay. That this is uh, fundamentally logically deductive sure. logic. Yes, sure. Sir. So either a God exists or it doesn't. And a theist is, is offering the proposition that a God exists. The number of gumballs is even. And I am rejecting their assertion. Theism is the acceptance of that position. And atheism is the rejection of that position. It's not the assertion that there are no gods. Mm -hmm. oh, we still on the same page? Yes, sir. Okay. So I don't believe their assertion. I also don't claim to know that their assertion is false. This is where the disjunct was that I talked about, because that, that knowledge claim actually applies to uh, the confusion that atheism is the assertion that there is no God. Fair enough. Be then I will we'll proceed to my last problem here. My, my position that comes to the fact that there's a false paradigm there between yeah. know-how. I know you take a lot of ca calls about, you know, higher thinking and things like that. Yeah, I normally but don't even bother. I don't even, normally don't even bother to put the clarifying there. I'm an atheist. That makes sense. So, but myself, as a considered a, uh, I would say, a Thomas Paine type guest, what would you, would it see when you basically have the paradigm there when someone sets up as a uh, like you know a Thomas Paine? I feel that that isn't accurately reflecting a, a, a rejection both a Catholic, you know, the Catholic religion, and a Thomas Paine uh, who was a philosopher. Does that make sense? I'm not quite sure what you just said. Let me rephrase. Yeah, I broke up a little bit. Okay, I, I'm a deist, so this is where my problem comes in. Why? Because everyone, I, I don't agree with any theist religion. I don't, because I, I only say that I am a deist in the fact that I can't even define what a deity is. So it's a, de, it's a deity, well, the, that, that's, uh, the concept you, of what Socrates says, or the basically that the, everything must have a beginning and an end, which means that after death, that means there, there must be a next, he, he said by you know, process of elimination. There must be something in between the consciousness going from life to death. I, he doesn't define what that is either, but he, what, he, but he rejected the concept of the, um, a God itself. If you can't define what a thing is, how can you say that you believe in it? But I say I put myself as a deist because it's the, old, it's the only closest label I can give to myself to saying I, I th believe that there's more, in the, there's something else there that is beyond the possibility of a human uh, perception. And I only say that because of the fact that so many perceptions out there that are beyond our current logical science, uh, scientific reach. But you, but, but you don't claim to be able to, to know for a fact one way or the other, right? Uh, you, can, you can only know the fact that things like x-rays 200 years ago what does, so, what wasn't a visible uh, light. You things say like yes a no. visible light spectrum. So, well, so it's, it's Brian, yes or no. Brian, how is that not just a massive argument from ignorance? There are things that we don't know, and thus I'm going right. to conclude that there's something bigger than us which I'm going to label a deity. 
Oh, no, I apologize, because I can't define it. I can't define the deity. I only say that there's things that we do not know. And by know, by saying we do not know them, if, that po- they said the if, overwhelming evidence is something else will become a, that could fit in that definition. If, if you don't define it as a deity, then how, why are you calling yourself a deist? Why not just say there are some things we don't know? We know. Yeah, Matt and I here know there's things we don't know. Lots of them. Probably great big, important, major you know, uh, 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 things, but... Um, What's more is by asserting or trying to put a label on it and trying to categorize it, you're claiming to know something about that which you don't know. Because you could, be, you could be wrong. So, I mean, there may not be actually any sort of... Like if we're talking about I- intellect, there may not be any sort of intellect beyond our own or greater than our own. Uh, there's no reason to think that, that the idea of some sort of transcendent being or a being that exists outside of space and time is even a coherent concept. And so when we say there are things we don't know, that's fine and that should be a full stop because when you start making claims about the nature of things that we don't know in order to justify a label, I think you've gone kind of off the deep end. You're right, and that's that's the thing. I, if I try to explain the, myself to a point, you have to give yourself some sort of category because I can't define myself in one specific area. Because Socrates said, the, you know, the, the wisest man of all was the person that admitted that he knew absolutely nothing. So that that was my central point here. I know that I know absolutely nothing. Hence, that that's why I can't be an atheist nor a theist. Hence, why day. Well, no, 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 no. There is no other option. You're either a theist or an atheist. There are no other options. You either believe in a, some gods or you don't. But I don't. But I don't do either because I actually choose to actually have ignorance. I believe I'm ignorant. But if you don't believe in any gods, here. if you don't believe, if you gods. do not actively believe in any gods, you are an atheist. That is what uh, atheism is: not believing in any that gods. It was a rejection of gods. Yeah, it's, it's a rejection of the claims of, of gods. It's no, the, no, I'm not saying that it's... Oh, uh, go ahead, sorry. The rejection is rejection of arguments, right? Well, if right, if, if no right. argument has been presented to you that there is a god which you have accepted, then you do not believe, uh, and you don't believe in any gods of your own. You haven't made up your own definition and believe that, right? If you're left without a belief, an active belief that there are, is a god or, or more, then you don't believe in any gods, and that is what an atheist is. You either accept the claim that the number of gumballs is even or you reject the claim. And those are the only two options with respect to that single claim. And the same is true for the existence of God. You either accept this claim that a God exists, in which case you're a theist, or you reject that claim, in which case you're an atheist. You, you've, you see but then when, not, you withhold, that when you withhold your no belief, with, There's no what? withhold. There's no withhold. If you, you, either ex- you either accept the claim or you do not. There are, that's the only two, for any single proposition, there are only two possibilities. You either accept the proposition or you do not accept the proposition. When you do not accept it, though, you don't necessarily reject it. That is a rejection. That means exactly the same thing. And now we're arguing over words. I don't want to go in a circle here. I apologize because I think we're on the same page. I just want to get that last point in there. Well, the thing is, when you start saying this is is, you start saying that you're neither a theist or an atheist, and I've already defined these as the only two options with with respect to a single claim. When you start saying that you're something else. Now you've divided this into more than one prong of an argument. Like I said earlier, you were addressing a single prong. That is the claim that a God exists. Let me, uh, ask, let me propose it in a similar fashion, and let me show you why it's accurate to withhold your belief. Now, we know about the visible light. I'm okay, with withholding. I'm okay with withholding belief. I'm saying that that is rejecting the claim. I am withholding, I am withholding my acceptance. Right, it's the same thing. When you're thing. withholding your acceptance, when you reject it and it later comes out to be true, then inherently you are intellectually dishonest because no. you rejected a claim that later turned out to be true. No, no, what? because rejecting the claim is not asserting that it is false. And even if it was, people are allowed to change their minds. Oh, that's what I. That's what the confusion is. Exactly. Thank you. But no, no, no. So I don't have. When you reject it, you don't define it as actually claiming it to be false. That's, I've said that's that five true. times. I've said that. Five, I, well, I, I use the gumball example to say that if I don't accept that it's true, that it's even, that I am not asserting that it's false. If I don't accept that a god exists, that does not mean that I'm asserting a god doesn't exist. I said this three or four times. 
and I'm hearing you, and and I'm actually trying to understand. I'm actually okay. trying to get an education. I do. I'm not trying to actually hit on you. No, I just thought you got it, and then when you came back with this. Anyway, go ahead. No, no, it's not that. It's it's my it's it goes down to these core definitions here. So when you say reject, you are actually saying that is similar to withholding a belief or having a lack of a belief. These are all almost definitions that can be interchanged. Sure. Okay, so when we have a end on rejection, you are saying rejection is not saying looking at a claim and saying no, this is false. It Correct. is actually saying, I don't, I do not think that it is true. It is the opposite of accept. Okay. That's all. The it is not. It is not the assertion of the contrary. Okay. Thank you. That's all I needed. Cool. Thanks, Brian. All right. Have a good one. I guess I just go straight to uh, philosophical. See, we're so used to doing a program that's kind of colloquial, accessible. <laughs> um, and I ride this line between uh, trying to make things that people understand, which is why I come up with gumball examples and stuff like that. This is a highfalutin uh, philosophical show today, and that's fine. Let's yeah. just accept that and move on. Yeah, A.C. Grayling would and come over and just, uh, well, I was going to say he'd smack me, but he's like the nicest man on the planet. <laughs> so he would just, you know, kind of look at me uh, mildly disapproving at this point, I'm sure. Why didn't you just say that to begin with? <laughs>